Welcome back to the channel. We've got ourselves a new battery pack from uh, batteryhookup.com. Uh, they did not send this, I purchased this. Um, this is a portable battery for Optune, uh, IBH-9000 is the model number. Um, don't know what any of that means, but it's interesting. It has a proprietary connector on it, uh, but we're gonna try to adjust that. So we're gonna tear it down do some uh, voltage checks on the cells, see what the configuration is, and then make a slight modification um, or a couple of modifications to make it a little more useful for my needs. Uh, the case here is interesting. It's got, uh, it's really nice. Um, these are stackable. I mean, these are gonna come in real handy. Um, it's got half the screws on one side, half the screws on the other. And so let's uh, take it apart and see what's inside. Alright, so here's what we got on the inside. Looks like we have ourselves eight in series and three in parallel. Uh, the power connector here, oh, this is pretty cool. Just a little break off connector. That's uh, perfect. That's now gone. We're not going to use that. And this ending here is uh, not very common. I've not seen that too often. It doesn't match the stuff that I use, so we're going to change that out. We're also going to upgrade these wires. From my understanding from the listing, the BMS can handle 10 amps, but these wires might not. So I'm going to bump up the wires, and then we're going to add uh, banana plug uh, power connectors on this side right here. We're going to put them right here. And I got a little trick to try to match them identical when I do more than one of these, and I'll show you why that is uh, later. But let's uh, work on that. Let's uh, test the voltages, see if they're balanced, and then um, swap out the connector and do some mounting. All right, let's check each cell and make sure the voltage is. Let's find the negative side of the pack, which I believe is here. So if we do a check here and here, we have 3.9. If we go all the way to the end, we've got 31.7. So again, 3.9, let's check the next cell, 3 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9
So what we're going to do here is I'm going to melt the pad on the circuit board and while it's molten I'm going to go ahead and insert the wire that we want to use. So we'll do one operation instead of two. I'm actually going to add a little solder to get some heat going. Seven, eight. There we go. Thirty four point seven point eight. So we're good. All right. So now we're going to move on to mounting our connector. Let me get things set up, and we'll be right back. All right. What we're going to do? We got the banana connector here. Um, so we're going to use this to charge and use um, the different scenarios of powering things so what we're going to do is take can you just use some we're going to mount everything right here and I want them all to be in the same place, which might be a little tough without doing some super measuring, but I figured if I just touch the curve to that corner of the hole and make it flush, that should give me what I'm looking for. So the first thing I'm gonna do is mark myself a hole. That looks pretty level and pretty good. So let's make some smaller holes and then we'll make big enough holes to allow our post there we go. All right. All right. So now that we have our holes and we have our plug. They should go in just fine. It's just a quick test fit. All right, but we need to also consider something. If we're going to work with multiple uh, battery packs like these, uh, we want to be consistent. And so what we're going to do, something to remember, ground to the hole, ground to the hole. So that's what we're going to work on. Uh, let's do some test fit here. I think, I think I'm going to run into a little bit of stuff here. This is raised up a little bit. I think that's not gonna quite fit. So let me clean this up around here. I think I'm gonna have to shave this down a little bit to fit. So let me work on that. tighten these down right now we're okay because we don't have any power connected to these but in a minute we're going to have our leads that we soldered onto the board connected to these plugs so when you're screwing these down on the next set you don't want to create a short so just extra abundance of caution luckily the BMS uh, would probably protect from a short but let's not test it Pretty tight.
that's pretty good connection there. I'm just going to bend that up a little bit so it doesn't go into the battery. So again, for extra level of protection, you might want to put some hot glue over these contacts or not, but I feel pretty safe that we're nowhere near touching any of this stuff. Uh, none of this has even come up to the seam, and the seam has space between the tallest chip here and up, so we're good. So now, we just like tuck everything together. Make sure there's no binding. I don't think any of those wires are pinching. Everything seems to be coming together okay. And now let's uh, test our voltage. Thirty-one point eight. We're good. All right, we got it all back together now. And so what I'm going to do off camera is deplete the battery, and then we're going to show you uh, the charge cycle from empty to full, and give you that reading. Um, and then I've got one thing else to show you um, in using multiple packs together. So we'll come back to that in a minute. Alrighty, um, finished charging. Probably could have done a little bit more, but uh, got it seven and a half amp hours. So that's pretty close to the 7.8 that it described. I don't know how well the uses are, but I did notice something in charging. I set it up at five amps and the batteries got quite warm. So my suggestion is to follow what the, they had on the website, which was treat it at 100 watts. Um, so I would charge it at two and a half, no more than three amps. Um, it probably isn't dangerous, but a lot of energy is being laced, wasted in heat. But that'd be true on the discharge as well. You probably don't want to go over two and a half, three amps. Um, so that's my initial thoughts. I think uh, I think these are cool. The cells themselves are um, pretty inexpensive. Um, Twenty nine dollars for this um, for this module, and there's twenty four uh, packs in there, so you could easily a little over a dollar a cell. Um, but I would try to use it as is. Um, don't necessarily need to scavenge them unless your project just requires it. Um, but if they have these in stock, you can get them from batteryhookup.com and you can use my coupon code, the word TECH, T-E-C-H, which will be in the description. Last thing I wanted to show on these is the reason why I took so much time to make sure that these modules lined up with these plugs. is so that if you want to parallel them, instead of using the plug-on connectors and trying to wire them all together, you could do something like this and have a bus bar. So going through... We can now marry up these two systems together. So that's one. And there we go. So now you've got double the capacity. And I have three of these that I've ordered so far. And after this, I'm probably going to get five more that is on the way. So you can build this stack up as high as you need. And with each stack, you get more capacity and almost more amperage. So with three of these, I could run a 300 watt um, inverter, which is kind of what my thoughts are. So I'll probably put this in a nice case, uh, put them together, daisy chain them, and then have a inverter on top of it. So I look forward to that project in the future, but that's my two cents. So uh, if they got them, I'd suggest picking some up. All right, that's the end of the video. You guys have a great day.